I am a business strategist and I specialize in growing profitable um, small and medium sized businesses. What I mean by that is that I help business owners, uh, I enable business owners to multiply their profits with uh, their wins, which I help them to find and then strategize and then execute. So for about uh, 10 years, uh, my clients have been enjoying a 400 average, 400 percent. Yeah, let me re rephrase it: a 400 percent average return on their investments in my solutions. So uh, this is the fundamental concern for many businesses, and it's a lot of business owners they don't know that there are simple and specific strategies that wouldn't cost them a dime to implement that could help them to recession-proof their business. Well, first of all, let's start with uh, the revenue streams. They can diversify their revenue streams by different means. It could be bundling their product, it could be expanding their product lines, um, anything to that extent. Of course, for each individual business, there will be a specific set of strategies, but in general, it just uh, things like that. Expand your revenue stream, build cash reserves, uh, make sure that you retain your clients longer, set up customer relationships program, control your costs with variable and fixed costs, and obviously make sure that you deliver the market to tar uh, the message to a target audience that would position you as a unique and it's standing out from your competition. Let's start again with revenue. I would look at my client's base as the first thing and I would see who are my largest clients, who are those who buy from me the most often, and then I would set up a database of those clients and I will try to figure out what are the common characteristics of those clients. And I will retarget my marketing specifically for those clients. Because those clients who pay more, who stay with you longer, pretty much are uh, those who will take you through the recession and will help you able to run a better business during the recession. This is my first thing that I would do. But and that wouldn't cost you anything. It's just uh, it's just uh, revisioning your client database and uh, uh, looking who buys one, uh, who buys what, like uh, how often. My second thing that I do is that I would change my marketing messaging to specifically target similar clients. For example, I am a, let's say, construction trade business. And I do home renovation. So now things, but there are people who regularly buy my services and pay me good, good value for, for what I do for them. I would sort all my client base according to how many they bought from me and how much they bought, how many times they bought from me and what was the average purchase size. Right? And I would ask them what made them buy from me, why did they buy from me? And I would ask specific questions and I would that way understand who are those clients, what are the common characteristics and I would retarget really my messaging my marketing messaging and my ads specifically for them. And that would be costing it uh, as dime. I, I could do it within three or four days. The main purpose of marketing is to make sure that you deliver the message to your clients that reflect the benefits that the relationship with you 
uh, those clients would have, right? So I would change my messaging in a way that, let's, say, uh, let's put it this way. There are two things. I, as an owner of a business, always understand that my business is unique. I know that I do things and I deliver value much better than my competition. And this is the internal reality of my business. But there is another, uh, another side of it. There is external perception of my business. Things that clients see when they come to my website, things that clients experience when they deal with. So I would put a lot of effort in making sure that there is no gap between the internal reality, which is perfect, and the external perceptions. And I would retarget all my messaging to reflect that. Yeah. Uh, as an example, as an example, if you take a newspaper and let's say pick up a business, a child daycare business, and you would probably see five or seven of those businesses in your local area. What would be different than their advertising in that newspaper? 99%, this is the chance that 99%, there is a 99% chance that when I see a little, when I look at all those five to seven advertising, I won't see any difference. So what I would do, I would change my marketing messaging to stand out from all those uh, uh, competitors. And in each case, it will be a different, uh, different message. But I cannot just, yeah, uh, one client that we had recently, we, uh, we repositioned them, we changed their targeting message in a way that it sounded something like that. How about you, a child, we will be reading at the second grade level even before they come to kindergarten. And I would make sure that all my internal processes and all my internal procedures would deliver on that message. And after that, I would start talking to those clients, or potential clients, and target them with that kind of message. And that would instantly make me stand out from my competitors. This is just a small example of doing that. It's hard to start business, especially in the recession time. But usually people who start businesses, they understand the industry and then rely on their experience and their knowledge when they create products. Yeah. It is, they might not have enough money to hire an expert to help them with what, but the internet is full of information about how to position your startup, how to create your marketing messaging, how to, how to deliver that messaging to your target audience. The knowledge is not the problem in, uh, in our case, it's the execution which is the problem and it's the execution is a always hard part in uh, for any business whether it is a startup or an establishing business so i would just advise those entrepreneurs who are starting up their business just to be very thorough and planning and execution especially on execution We can go through a list of industries, but I have a rule of thumb. If the clients or customers or potential customers in that particular sector buy those products or services as the necessity, like consumer staples, people always buy pharmaceutical products or people always buy grocery uh, or people always people always go and it's do maintenance of their uh, cars yeah. so in the service for the, that the industry provides or the business provides are those that are consumed on a regular basis and it's, they are not discretionary like people can uh, say choose not to buy them yeah so if they are not uh, non-discretionary, that means that that business will 
have more chances to survive through the recession. On the other hand, if your business delivers discretionary products or services, there is a chance that you need to put a lot of effort to position yourself as a different, uh, as a unique service or product provider to attract the clients. And it's, it will take you more effort to go through, through the recession. If I look at comparing companies as this one sells product and this one sells service, and we speak about the recession, it will be difficult to compare them without the common base. Okay. And the common base for the comparison would be the non-discretionary na nature of the product or service. So that puts them uh, pretty much uh, on the same page for comparison. And if I look at the product and service, it is typically cost, cost less to deliver up a service than a product. So for a product company, if they do the cost management efficiently, they would fare much better than the product company who doesn't do it, right? for example, but it's hard to compare product and service. First of all, do you need to retain all your customers? Or do you need to attract more customers if you are like running at 80% uh, of of your capacity utilization, which means that you cannot add any clients because you won't have time to do that, right? You, you, you just won't have resources to do that. So first question, do you need to attract more clients if you are already running at 80 plus percent capacity utilization? I would totally wouldn't focus on that. What I would focus on is that and it's, I already mentioned it at the beginning of our conversation, at the quality of my clients. Yeah, I would look at the clients who deliver me the most value during my relationships with them. Uh, in the industry terms, it is called long-term value of your client. So I would look at those clients and it's, I would try to attract one of those while at the same time, I would look at the bottom half of my clients or the bottom half of my clients who are not that, who are not delivering me better long time value. It, I would quickly try to get rid of them. Right, so in our terms, it is called swimming upstream. Let's say I landed one high ticket client and I get, can get rid of two low ticket clients because they, they, marginally they don't do very well for me right so those are strategies that i would start with i will be giving you just general strategies but in each case it will uh, it will be a different strategy it will be unique and customized for each client well first of all Build cash reserves if it's possible. Build financial reserves. Then diversify your vendors. Make sure that you have a large number of different vendors who deliver you uh, the same products or services that you, that you need to serve your clients. Then score or rate your values. Make sure that you deal with the best of them. And so that is one strategy on the supply side. Uh, another strategy would be forecast your demands. See who buys what and where and be ready to address their needs at the time when they buy, right? And uh, and for that, you might need to build some inventory reserves. 
in advance. That could be two major strategies that I would do. Diversify and rank your vendors and forecast demands. The third thing uh, that I would do, your cost control, renegotiate with your vendors and make sure that you have legal contracts with them so that you have a unique course if something, uh, if something that you don't expect happens. Not only during the recession, but in the regular course of business, uh, business and when the economy is healthy too, there are a lot of government programs at the federal and at the national, uh, provincial level. There are some programs that are at the local level too. So to find those programs, you just need to do a simple search in Google. First of all, let's say Canada Small Business Grants, and you'll get a lot of answers which programs are available for you. Or Ontario small business grants, or let's say your regional small business grants, something like that. Typically, you can go to your local, uh, to your say, municipal or uh, regional municipalities and talk to the to the investment and small business support departments, and they will be able to provide you with a whole list of programs. And not only that, they will be able to help you to submit your application and make sure that uh, uh, your chances of winning those grants are high. I don't know the economists, but there are available, uh, there are indicators that available for general public who could uh, access them, look at them in the regular the news flow. But, and those indicators are like macroeconomic indicators such as GDP growth. Uh, as a rule of thumb, I think, I just don't remember, if the GDP is not growing, within two or three quarters that would indicate that the recession has stopped. Then the unemployment rate, if it's growing and GDP is not growing, that would indicate that the recession will start. There are a lot of complex indicators like yield curve inversion. Uh, we are not talking about that because they are hard to understand. But there is a good indicator which is called consumer confidence. If people are buying more and especially if they're buying well, discretionary public school services. That would mean that the recession is not there yet. But if that the number of people who buying discretionary, discretionary products and services declining, that would be a warning sign for me.